You saw it. I saw it. The video of an American F-22 stealth fighter flying at 58,000 feet shoot down the Chinese spy balloon. The kill shot was accomplished with a Sidewinder missile and took place off the coast of South Carolina. Of course, not before it had traveled across the entire continental United States, likely taking pictures of our most sensitive military installations. And of course, capable of something much worse. The dropping of solar-powered small listening devices is certainly an option, but even worse, what if this had been an attack and not just a spy balloon? The payload possibilities are endless. So yes, I was right there with most Americans cheering as we saw this balloon explode with its payload crashing into the ocean. But did we have to spend $67 billion to shoot it down? Yeah, you heard that right. $67 billion to develop the F-22 Raptor program, decades in the making, and its first air-to-air kill is a balloon? We got to talk about this. Welcome to The Money Runner. I'm David Nelson. Let's get this right out in front. This is not a podcast with a call to reduce defense spending. There is a desperate need to up our game, especially as the rising threat from China gets bigger each and every day. In fact, there was a second incident of a UFO shot down at 40,000 feet just inside Alaskan airspace. And over the weekend, another object was brought down over Canadian airspace. Again, the F-22 Raptor was the aircraft used. The above begs the question why the Chinese balloon wasn't shot down as it approached Alaska instead of letting it fly over the continental United States. A question the administration has failed to answer properly and one Americans expect answered was something more than they were concerned about falling debris. The threats we face are a clear and present danger. Every corner of the planet is a geopolitical hotspot with a direct challenge to our national security. If we're going to meet that challenge, what we can and must do is make more intelligent decisions on how we spend taxpayer dollars. By definition, almost anything associated with government has waste. Comes with the territory. But surely, when embarking on programs in the tens of billions, we can make an effort to use our dollars more efficiently. It pains me to point out the obvious flaws in the procurement of military hardware. I'm a commercial pilot, and I love high-tech advanced aviation. But I also know that the decision-making process isn't always focused on what's needed to defend our nation, but more about the Benjamins and political survival. Fiscal sanity does not have to mean we sacrifice a strong national defense. The system itself is flawed and almost encourages waste instead of maximizing efficiency. No question, the F-22, a fifth-generation fighter, is an awesome weapons platform. But the program was flawed from the start. Various sources point out that only around 130 of the 187 delivered F-22s were fully operational. And today, the number of combat-ready F-22s could be in the double digits. Compared to other programs, the F-22 as a weapon system has seen far less operational use. After years of development and testing, the F-22 was first deployed in February 2007 with the 27th Fighter Squadron to Kadena Air Base in Okinawa. In 2013, it intercepted an Iranian F-4 Phantom. In 2014, it saw its first combat flying sorties over Syria dropping bombs on 60 locations. And in 2018, it helped defeat pro-Russian government and Wagner Group paramilitary forces in Syria. And of course, today we have a balloon kill and the downing of two objects. It's clear the Air Force doesn't see a long runway for the program. There were studies, some costing millions to explore extending or restarting production. But as of this pod, that doesn't seem to be in the cards. I don't want to harp on a single weapon system as the centerpiece of why we need a full reset. I'm sure the F-22 Raptor has been used in classified missions, 
that aren't in the, pu in the public domain. But it should be clear we're not getting enough payback for the dollars spent and clearly not allocating our resources efficiently. Even when the military tries to save money, Congress won't let them. In a post this month, the Heritage Foundation discusses how the U.S. military has been telling Congress it has too many bases. In 2016, the Pentagon estimated they were carrying 22% excess infrastructure, unnecessary bases, buildings, and facilities. Shutting them down, as the Pentagon has suggested, would create savings of approximately $2 billion per year. The reason Congress isn't following the recommendation is obvious. It might cost them votes at home if a base closure is in their district. The above speaks volumes as to why we need term limits. We need congressional leaders who think less about getting reelected and more about serving their country. With the U.S. deficit at 120% of GDP, the highest since World War II, you need to get some religion about your finances. Yes, we need advanced weapons programs, making it unthinkable for an adversary to believe they could succeed in an attack. That means making tough decisions early in the procurement process. Cost-benefit analysis should be at the heart of every decision, just like it is in the private sector. And by God, if the military wants to stop spending money on something, let them. I'm not talking about $640 toilet seats or a $7,600 coffee, ma coffee maker, the kind of thing you saw in the 80s. Today's military hardware is going to be expensive, and all the more reason we need in-depth oversight on how each and every dollar is spent. Becoming more efficient starts at the planning phase. Cost overruns have become all too commonplace. Hold the military industrial complex accountable for their projections. <sighs> Maybe the most glaring example of what I'm describing is the Joint Strike Fighter F-35 program. It was expected to cost $200 billion in 2002 dollars. By 2017, it had ballooned to twice that a figure that will likely continue to rise over time. If it runs to 2070, its intended life cycle, it could be as much as $1.5 trillion. Now that's serious money. China continues to expand its military footprint. Russia will always be a threat. And North Korea and Iran are wild cards with unstable leadership. If we're going to get our military back to a readiness level where it can defend our interests on two fronts, a mandate experts today say isn't being met. The United States not only needs a defense budget to meet that challenge, but the financial oversight to ensure its success. If you like the pod, hit subscribe. Questions and comments always welcome. We love the feedback. Thanks for joining. I'm David Nelson.